Hey guys, Subzikid here with another tutorial on After Effects, and this ain't just no normal After Effects tutorial. This is an MS tutorial. No, it's um, it's an After Effects CS CS6 tutorial. So yeah, um, basically what I'm gonna be showing you today is how to use a 3D camera tracker, and I'm gonna be showing you how to motion track just just text and like pictures as well. And basically this is all done with an After Effects CS6 it's using its own plugin. It, it's not a plugin. Well, it's an effect which is like comes with CS6 and you don't need Bujuru or like any other dedicated motion tracking software so let's get into CS6 and I'm going to be showing you how to do something like this and as you can see I've got a troll face there which is motion tracked and uh, you mad bro well you mad over there and as you can see it's just like it's just perfectly 3D motion track like just amazingly and it's so simple it's actually kinda unbelievable how like simple it is really but yeah, I'm going to show you how to do that really. Um I might show you how to do the um how to actually make the text 3D and how to make 3D objects, but I might save that for a separate tutorial because that's it's got quite a bit to cover in that. So, but I might just quickly show you how to do it. So, I'm going to quickly make a new composition and I'm just going to go to about here uh hit B and then just trim comp to work area so it's just like nice and like that basically um but anyway to m to motion track it basically the first step um is you can either do a simple right click command so right click on it and hit track camera or just drag and drop the 3d camera tracker they're both exactly the same it doesn't make a difference so let's uh le oh, let's just go with the right click right click thingy and as you can see it says analyzing in background and basically what that means is that you can still go around editing this uh, well may, it's be probably best not to actually edit the actual thing you're analyzing but basically you can just go and say into a different composition and just carry on your workflow like what you're doing so you can keep a good momentum when you're working so I can just go around still editing this so let's just go and edit this somehow so let's just take off oh crap let's click on this and take away tracker boom I just did I just edited it while it's still solving and basically it has the amount of time the percentage and what frame it's frame it's on like what it's doing in the top left hand corner in the effects tab and on the last frame it usually lags for a bit because then it goes into the next step because as you can see it's step one of two and the next step is solving the camera boom and that usually doesn't take long and as you can see these are all the track points and let's quickly go into the effect of like the 3d camera tracker effect and let's just quickly go through what you can like uh... what you can do here and basically here there are some settings which you can change like if you actually know the like angle of view um... basically if you know it it makes it more accurate um, show track points uh... basically you can have 3d or 2d solved whoops and basically as you can see here if you click on 3d camera tracker here you get all the points and the bullseyes and stuff but say if you click away they disappear and you're like oh my god where'd they go and basically for them to come back up you need to click on this but say if you want them there at all times check that little render track points button so even if you click away <coughs> they're still there like that boom let's maybe just turn this down because my recorder's just taken some whoa anyway um and here you have the track point size and I'm just going to really quickly going to uncheck that track point size it's pretty obvious like would you so <clears throat> I'm just going to set it back to 100 because as you can see these points are quite small and say so if you actually want to motion track something there you can just turn them up so you can actually see them a bit more clearly but I'm just going to set it back to 100 and of course target size these little bullseye targets which you get if there's like a small one there like say that's quite small you can just turn that size up and boom it's bigger but there's no need for that in this tutorial anyway so I'll set it to 100% and the solve method there's auto detect which is probably the best because it's pretty amazing it does it by itself and it's pretty like accurate anyway because as you can see here uh, the average error is 0 0.58 pixels so that's basically impossible to realize so I, I doubt any of you have like microscopic abilities in your eyes to be able to see even a pixel because that that's like half a pixel is nothing so that's basically perfect 
and detailed analysis if you check that it does it like even more accurately but it takes a bit longer and hide warning banner um i don't even know what that does but pretty sure it's just it hides a warning banner ah yeah you know when you're motion tracking it and it says analyzing if you just check that it'll hide it and boom i think i'm pretty sure that's what it does if it doesn't comment below anyway um now time to add some text so let's basically as you can see you have these target bullseye which just appear in some places um, these are basically the points which After Effects have recommended to you and as you can see by the orientation and like angle of where the bullseye is facing you can see how the text or whatever you're going to add to it is going to look like and these are pretty good but to make it even better you can actually add your own by selecting your own points and to do that like just click a point and then hold down shift select another point uh, hold down shift select another point and as you can see it like makes a bullseye you have to have at least three points selected maybe select this one and as you can see the orientation changes and basically you can just select quite a few until it gets like that's looking good like it's on the wall or an easier way to select quite a few points is just click and drag and it will bring a little loop like that and boom you can see it's selected quite a few points see if you want to select even more hold down shift and you can just drag another circle and it will select them as well and as you can see that's like looking pretty good there but another way to get your tracking even more accurate is see if you select some points like that that's looking pretty good but another but a way to check that is really good is if you get the middle of the bullseye and just click it and hold it down you can drag it around and you can just see if it's going in a like if it's going along the face of the part where you want to track it so as you can see it's going in a like at the same angle as the wall even like down here so if the wall actually went down here the track would still look pretty good and the same like going down here as well um, but sometimes if you like do it on the ground at some points you can if you go down you can see it kind of looks like it's going in a circle type shape like the ground is kind of like a circle because as you can see it kind of curves over slightly but yeah and to fix that you can like probably select some more points to fix it like across a wider range and it, it should be able to fix that but for here I'm just going to be selecting well about these points here and as you can see that looks pretty good so as you can see it's like that's looking good and basically what you do is you right click it and right click the bullseye and select what you want to add basically so text in camera so in camera and null in camera and create a shadow capture in camera and like that's for the ray traced renderer 3d mode so that's when you're doing official 3d stuff that's or you, you can still use it in the normal 3d classic but you don't really need it when you're doing that stuff so um, I'm gonna create some text and a camera and as you can see the text is pretty big but if we actually just go through you can see it's actually motion track pretty nicely there like pretty nicely but let's just quickly adjust this so bring down woo, bring down the size slightly um, let's see uh, let's change the text to something like OMG it's amazing okay um so that's looking like good so boom but as you can see the orientation is kind of retarded and feel free to just click on your text layer hit R for the orientation and just like mess around with it so boom that's looking even better now that it, it's like it's like it was always there hmm. but the thing is is that you can actually move it out slightly and just like rotate it about and you see that it's still motion tracked even though you brought it away from its original tracking point and you can still see that it's pretty perfectly well not well yeah it's basically perfectly motion tracked still so if we go like that still perfectly I would say I would say perfectly motion tracked so maybe like even move it along there and now let's try this that I, I don't think it can really get any better than that to be honest um, and that's basically the text part and you can just add like some glow and fancy effects to the text and that's that part and now to add like say a picture so oops if I go into my other composition here you can see I added a troll face picture here 
and basically to do that what you have to do is go into here and click on your cinematic or whatever you have on, go on 3D camera tracker and select the points again so like that and so you can see that's pretty well that that's that's pretty good this is only two tool there's no point in getting it perfect really you can do that spend your time um and basically what you do is you create a null and basically it keeps that point as a reference point or like the null keeps it like referenced uh as a 3d thing and as you can see if you just go through it you can see that the null is actually like 3d motion track basically there so now you're just like what about the picture so you just bring in your picture like so and as you can see it's just like dude it's 2d it's not doing anything you gotta make it 3d and as you can see it's motion tracked with the camera because the camera is just like motion tracked it basically like so but it's like dude it's not over where the null point is and basically to do that you need to parent it but you don't just run you do you don't just parent it like normally you actually have to hold down shift and then grab the pick whip tool and then drag it to the null object so basically when you do that it it the scale the orientation the position of the track null is also put onto the whatever you parented it with because if you just parented it normally it doesn't actually do anything it's just that whatever you do later with the track null would happen with the troll face picture so if you moved it up so if you move the track null up the troll face would go up as well but when you do the shift and parenting it it does everything so as you can see it's just like you know it's like there but let's just quickly scale it down slightly maybe even bring it down that's looking like that that's looking trolly yeah you know trolly yeah and boom that's looking good and to be honest that's basically it Let, well base so, something you can do to make it look a bit more realistic is if you click on your troll face and then select the uh, ellipse tool and just basically make a quick circle or ellipse around it and then click on the mask hit F and turn up the feather until it starts to fade away slightly like that and then hit T for opacity and bring it down slightly and then it looks a bit more like it's been drawn on it's like dude was it always there and then it's like you end up going on Modern Warfare 3 checking if it's there and you're like oh shit it's not and basically yeah and what you can do is as you can see I did it with the text here as well it doesn't look as good with the text though but you can just mess around with it and to be honest that's about it uh, there's like not much else you can do really it's like what else would you want to do um, you could like make this text 3d by going changing the renderer to ray traced but I will leave that for another tutorial because there's quite a lot to cover in that and yeah I should be releasing that tutorial pretty soon or if you want another tutorial to come out first before that on some of the other effects like or just a review of like the new features there's also like some other stuff like mask feather tool um, the warp stabilizer is pretty advanced in this as well um, yeah just message me tweet me anything I'm gonna be releasing like tutorials on basically everything or overviews like the global performance cache I'll be explaining that even though there's n it's not really a tutorial it's more of a overview of it so that's it really um thanks for watching guys oh yeah actually before that if you look at some point so say if I grab this text here that was pretty awkward saying thanks for watching it's like carrying on the tutorial if if you look here it's just like it's like in front because over here if you actually want it to be behind the wall it's like it's not actually behind the wall so oh, whoops wrong thing so if you grab the text and push keep on missing it grab the text yeah and push it backwards like that and you still go back you see that it still like comes in front and basically what you need to do you need to mask up the wall like so you just need to make a quick mask and animate the uh, mask of it so that it looks like 
so basically it covers up the text and it makes it l makes the text look like it's behind the wall and to, and to do that I have a separate tutorial on that which I've already made I'll link that up in the I'll link that to you in the description and that's about it really now I can say thanks for watching guys don't forget to rate comment and subscribe uh yeah like drop a like and all that stuff follow me on twitter um it's probably the best way to contact me if you want a tutorial or just any questions cuz I'm kind of running out of tutorial ideas, even though I've got quite a few with CS6. But, yeah. Um, thanks, guys. See ya in the next, I mean, no, After Effects CS6 tutorial. So if, sorry for this random, interruption, random interruption, even though it's like at the end of the video. But, um, I forgot to, like, near the beginning of this video, to give a quick shout out to Super Sido Films. Basically, he's a good friend of mine from school and he basically brought me into editing and he's basically the first one who introduced me and basically he uploads like loads of tutorials and edits himself he's a motion graphics artist he he's he can even do graphics and it's just amazing it's just like he's only got 364 subscribers and I know it's like kinda of weird me saying uh, I've only got 180 subscribers and I'm giving a shout out to someone who's got more subscribers to me but I'm just saying it's like he deserves way more views like 372 views it's just like it's, it's just kinda of stupid how many views he doesn't have but he deserves way more so yeah um subscribe to him be active to him if you like uh, if he gets like another hundred or so subscribers for me, that would just be amazing for him and me as well. And yeah, follow him on Twitter as well at SuperNGJ. So yeah, thanks for this. And yeah, be active to him, and he deserves way more. See ya.